not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like you to have my notes and records. Of all the newspapers, yours was the only one which was fair to me. Thanks, Doctor. This morning, my old friend George Kingsley was conducting his class at the University of Newcastle. And in 1547, Sir Joshua Peachtree wrote, Thou who breakest glass will find fate can be almost oh, unkind. Under ladder walkest thee, most unlucky thou wilt be. Each dread Friday do take care else thou fallest down a stair. <laughs> <laughs> and with that little epic, Sir Joshua proved that he was a poet of the first rank. In fact, uh, I should say he possibly was the rankest poet that England ever <laughs> 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 uh, Just a moment, please, just a moment. This being the end of the semester, I have an announcement to make that I'm sure will give you a great deal of pleasure. Although I myself I'm sorry to tell you that I may not be with you next term. Today I must leave to appear before the Inquisitional Board of Regents of a very large university in the East. Very large university indeed. How many of the dunce that has been sent to Rome <laughs> excels the dunce that must stay at home? I sincerely hope the board does not like me. I'll try and be back next term. Oh, my umbrella. Dr. Kingsley. Yes. I wish you the best of luck, but... Thank you, Edmund. Yeah, we hope to see you next semester, Doctor. We'd better hurry, Professor. Dad will be waiting to take us yes, to the station. Have a good trip, Professor. Thank hurry you back. very much. Professor. Yes, sir. No. English won't seem the same without you. Well, that's very nice of you Come to on, be Professor. Yes, 
You know, Gene, I'm going to miss all this. But most of all, I'm going to miss your father. He's a brilliant man, Gene. It distresses me to think that such a great brain surgeon should be so utterly wasted in Newcastle. Newcastle is a very welcome port in a very bad storm. Why, if it hadn't been for you, Professor, I don't know what Jean, we would have done. Oh, Gene, my dear. Well, Margaret, you don't know how sorry I am to see you and George leave. You've befriended Jean and me in so many ways since we came to live here. We're going to miss you too, Ernst. Thank you, Margaret. Oh, here they are. Hello, darling. Hello, Margaret. Hello. Ernst, if I could only drive, I'd never impose on you like this. <laughs> it's a pleasure, George. It's rather a mixed one, you know. We hate to see you go. <laughs> Hello, Dad. Oh, Hello, I Dad. knew I'd forgotten something. As usual. What now? Ernst, would you mind stopping at the students' cleaning shop? My one and only hat is there. <laughs> and a professor must have dignity when he goes to the city lesson. <laughs> There we are, George. What's George, George. Oh. Hurry, oh, we missed the train. Right, oh, Professor, don't let them sell you one of those fancy feathers. I won't, <laughs> I won't. And George, George, George. Yes, dear. Now watch the traffic, won't you? Yes, careful, please. darling, now, don't Careful, worry. now, Cannon now belongs to the history of crime. Past tense. But what about our dough? We ain't got it back yet. Yeah. Yeah, how about it? Mr. Devore, it would have been poor business to kill Red unless I knew how to locate the money. Turn back to the city. Thanks. He's going to be all right, my dear. Now you go home with Jean and I'll call you later. We'll be waiting, Dan. Come on. were shooting at you. Who were they? Just a few of my pals. How bad am I hurt? A few minor cuts on the scalp, that's all. Any pain? No, not much. Who's the other customer? The man you ran down. He's dying. Hmm. Softy. Did those guys get away? Yes. And pull the bell cord of this bus. This is where I get off. I'm going rat killing. Hey, I'm tied down. What is this, a pinch? Turn that thing off. I can't stand it. It's driving me crazy. No use, Sovac. Kingsley has compound frontal and parietal fracture and severe concussion of the cerebrum. Just a matter of hours or minutes. Pulse 65. He's in a coma. You can go. I'll stay. What's the matter with me, Doc? Thanks. What's the matter with me, Doc? I can't feel nothing. My legs are there, but I can't feel them. Your spine is broken. You're paralyzed. Pull me through, Doc, will you? Pull me through and I'll pay you anything.
The only possible way to save George Kingsley's life is by a brain transplantation, an operation I performed successfully on animals. This is a dangerous and illegal operation, but a chance to make a great scientific discovery and perhaps save my friend's life. How long will his head be bandaged? Oh, not long now. Dr. Sovac. Yes? Two gentlemen want to see you. Who are they? They are detectives, I believe. I'll see them. Excuse me, please. I'll be right back, George. A miraculous recovery, Mrs. Kingsley. Amazing. It's canon, all right. Well, doctor, the head injuries caused death? And many complications. His spine was broken. We did all we could for him. Don't feel badly about it, doctor. He wasn't worth it. He had nothing but the electric chair to live for. Did he say anything before he died? About money, for instance? Not that I know of. Thanks, doctor. With that money, I could build my own laboratory and continue with my experiments. Kingsley is convalescing and seems to show some of Red Cannon's traits. Does the Cannon brain in Kingsley's head retain the knowledge of the hidden money? I've been waiting to see you, Ernst. I'm worried about George. He just doesn't seem himself. Why, he's getting stronger every day, isn't he? Physically, yes. But his mental condition doesn't seem right. He's irritable. Flies into a rage for no reason at all. That isn't like George. No, it isn't. He has been acting strangely lately. I don't think I'd be too alarmed about it, though, if I were you. Well, I hope you're right. I think so. You're late today, Ernst. Come and sit down and talk to me. I'm feeling very low. Will you have some tea? No, thanks. The trouble with you is you're feeling too well. Too well? I used to think that a long period of convalescence would be like an ocean voyage. That I'd have a chance to read all the books I want to that I hadn't time to ordinarily. But nothing seems to interest me. A boring period, convalescence. Yes, indeed it is. I'm afraid I've got to go to New York for a few days, George. You've got to... Yes, a little business for the hospital. Well, that's nice, I must say. What am I going to do for companionship? Well, why not come with me? Come with you? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. New York's too big, too noisy. I never have wanted to go there. And yet, it's the very thing you need, George. You've had your fill of peace and quiet. You'll find New York exciting, stimulating. Just the thing to lift you out of the doldrums. As my doctor, do you prescribe it? As your doctor, I insist on it. Very well. I'll tell Margaret to pack. Oh, no, George. Let's go alone. Alone? In New York, without Margaret? What you need is a radical change. Well, perhaps you're right, Ernst. I've been like a bear lately. I'm quite sure she'd be glad to be rid of me for a time. New York. New York, I wonder... I'm taking Kingsley to Red's old environment. In fact, to the Midtown Hotel, which Cannon used as his hideout. Good 
afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, we'd like adjoining rooms. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, 505 and 506, if they're available, are they? Well, yes, they're available. Thank you. Uh, you've uh, been with us before, sir? Well, no, of course not. But I, I like a corner room with three windows and a fire escape. This way, gentlemen. in the next room, Ernst. Uh, will you bring the black bag in here, please? You sure picked a room with a history, Mr. Kingsley. Oh, really? But you see, history is not my subject. I don't mean that. I'm talking about Red Cannon. He hid out in these rooms for nearly six months from cops, G-men, and his own gang. Nobody in the hotel suspected him, but his gang got wise and Red tried to run out. They caught up to him in some small town in the sticks. Imagine when we found out who he was, and him with nearly a million bucks hidden away. Say, the manager locked himself in here and took these rooms apart. Yes, yes, yes. But he's still the manager, so I guess he didn't find it. Anyway, I made plenty out of Cannon. I was the only one he allowed up here. I had a special way of knocking. Yes, sir. That's it. Thanks. A talkative youngster. <laughs> Babbles on like Tennyson's brook. <laughs> Ernst, I'm going to freshen up a bit. And then let's go out. Let's uh, do the town. You know what I mean. A good dinner and perhaps a, a bottle of wine. Splendid, George. I'll get changed and then we'll go. I chatter, chatter as I flow to join the brimming river. For men may come and men may go, but I go on forever. Cannon Brain remembers this hotel. Will it also remember Red's friends? Miller, Kane, DeVore and Marnie. I'm taking Kingsley to the Club Royale where he'll see Sonny Rogers, Cannon's former sweetheart. My kisses captured your lips But never reached your heart Last night I thought you loved me dearly And I was no on fashion. heaven George, I'm ready for anything I can do Yes, sir But now you're as far As far as the tiny star I find the singer rather interesting, don't you, George? Uh, who is she, Ernst? I seem to know her. Could she be one of my former students?
I really am surprised, George, that you're pretending to know the singer. <laughs> oh, come, come, come now, Ernst. I'm a college professor, not a college boy. <laughs> All these people here on Pleasure Bent. And pleasure brings, as surely in her train, remorse and sorrow and vindictive pain, as William Cowper says. Boy, what's wrong, George? My head hurts. That pain again. I can't stand it. We'll leave instantly. Yes, yes, the next train leaves at noon. Do you wish me to make a reservation? Yes, please. And send up a boy to help me pack, will you? Well, good morning, George. You slept late. But my sleep doesn't seem to refresh me. Ernst. We're old enough friends that we don't have to deceive each other. Why do you say that? And tell me, what is the matter with me? My sleep only seems to tire me. And I'm haunted by the most horrible dreams. A perfectly normal reaction to the shock of your accident, George. Come in. What do you mean by that ridiculous tap? Tap, 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 tapping. Why don't you knock the door like anybody else? Anything you say, sir. You wanted me to pack? Yes. I don't know what I'm doing here anyway. Ernst, I'm going home. I need Margaret. I don't think I'd try to leave today, George. Now, you can stop the packing. Yes, sir. I don't think you're well enough to travel. Now let's wait and see how you feel tomorrow. Kill you, you came back to get revenge. Red, do you remember the name Marnie? Marnie. He's the one who took your place. Marnie Miller. Cain, Devon. Why did they try to kill you, Red? To get your money? But they didn't find it, did they? It's safe, just where you hid it. Where is it, Red? Mar. Miller. Cain. That hick town. You're the doc, ain't you? Yes. Say, my back's better. You cured me? Yes. You're perfectly well now. Thanks, doc. I won't forget it either. Midtown Hotel, huh?
How'd I get here? You asked me to bring you. I must have been out of my head. Like every copper in town will be looking for me. I've got something to tell you, Red. Oh, yeah? What? You were smashed up in an accident, you remember? Well, I had to operate to give you another body. You had to do what? What are you talking about? Why did you do this to me? It was the only way to keep you alive. Oh. My Doc, you're a genius. But you could have given me a better chassis. I never saw plastic surgery like that before. I used the body of the other man who was dead. Yeah. It was the only way to save you. Say, wait a minute. Nobody will know me like this. Why, I can do anything. Who was the other guy? He was a professor of English literature. English literature? <laughs> well, well, how are you, Prof? You're now Professor George Kingsley, and you teach in the university at Newcastle. What a disguise. What a break for uh, Red Cannon. Come in. Telegram, sir. Thank you. Hey, what is... Next time you do as you're told. When you come to my room, knock like this. Now, Scram. Yes, sir. Next time. Good morning, sir. I'll take them. And uh, here's the morning paper, sir. Compliments of the house. Thank you. Say, you sure get around, mister. From the looks of those clothes last night, it would seem like you fell into a cement mixer. That'll be all. Yes, sir.
Morning? Yes. How do you feel? Not very well. I'm afraid coming to New York was too exciting. I... I feel as if... The, as if the life were drained out of me. Oh, she will be all right as soon as you've had a little rest. Well, perhaps so. Here's a curious thing, George. It seems that Louis Duvall, one of the Red Cannon gang, was found early this morning in a deserted building, dying from the effects of a brutal beating. His back had been broken. Good heavens, Ernst. Why on earth bother me with that gruesome stuff? Sorry, George. Things have taken a dangerous turn. Kingsley has killed the boar. While in this environment, I never know when the murderous brain of Red Cannon may take possession of Kingsley. But I will not stop my experiments. I must find out where the Cannon money is hidden. I wonder if you'd be kind enough to open my friend's door for me. I'm a little worried about him. He hasn't been very well. Yes, sir. I ain't been feeling so well myself lately. Evidently, my friend has gone out. <laughs> you can wait for me. No, thank you. I was here the other night with a friend. Uh, the rather middle-aged gentleman. That's right. Has he been here tonight? I don't think so. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, there was a gentleman that looked like him at the bar. At the bar? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, on second thought, uh, it couldn't have been your friend. And besides, that man left a little while ago, sir. Oh. I don't think Sonny was pleased to see us. Why are we wasting time fooling around here? Didn't you see that newspaper picture of the boy's battered body? So maybe they'll kill us after us, too. A good deduction. But who would want us dead except some friend of Red's? And who would know about Red Cannon's friends better than Sonny? That's right. Tell your nerve to stop doing nip-ups. Marna will handle this. You will handle this, Kane. I've seen you trying to take Red's place here. Go on. I didn't have any part of Devore's killing. Nobody said you did. And everything's just lovely. 
I'd like to see you at your apartment after you get through. Maybe if we put together what you know about Red and what I know, it'll add up to some money. Say, if I knew anything about a half a million bucks, do you think I'd be working in this joint? We'll go over all that later. Like it? Sure. It's yours. Tonight. What is this? Get out of my car. What do you want? You ought not to have to think very hard after what happened to Devor. Who are you? Who is it? Who is it sent you that money to get out of that trouble in Chicago? Red. You're alive? Oh. Yes. I'll be right up. Don't speak. Don't even move. Just let me look at you. It's great to be back, Sonny. Why did you move the piano? You know I always like it in that corner. How do you know about that? Well, surely you didn't think I'd forget in two short months. Are there any cigarettes in the door? Yes. You look good, darling. Come on, let's have a drink. Touched, eh? Good girl. Well, here we are. How do you like the trimmings? Let me put it on. How did you get it? Just picked it up. Seemed very glad to see me. You're afraid. What are you afraid of? I'm not afraid. Red Can must be jumping with joy in his grave the way his boys are getting knocked off. All right, boy. About the Devon and Kane murders. You know, they were both Cannon's men. And we've always believed that his own gang was responsible for Red's death. Can some friend of his be systematically killing off his murderers? A uh, dead gangster has no friends. Now, I want you to go out and find Marnie and Miller. Yes, sir. Okay. Take a couple of men with you and check the Rich Manor apartments.
you're sure this is Marley's apartment. Good afternoon. I'm sorry, but Mr. Marnie is not at home. Do you mind if we wait for him? Not at all. Are you a friend of Mr. Marnie? In a way, I'm just waiting till he comes back. Who are you? What? We're from police headquarters. Oh, I see. My name is Kingsley. I'm a professor of English at the University of Newcastle. From Newcastle? Yes. You the professor was hit the time Ray Cannon was killed? That's right. Well, what business could you have with Marty? You better come along with us and explain that to the DA. Sonny. Money. What's the matter? Aren't we welcome? So Kane was here last night. Well, I uh, had a date with him, but he didn't show up. The police found his body this morning strangled. Yeah, and his back was broken, just like the voice. Well, well, I don't know anything about it. No, if Kane wasn't here, where did you get that watch? Well, I expected him, but somebody else came and gave me the watch. Who? He said he was. Red Cannon. What did you drive up in? A hearse? Try again. And be a little more believable. I'm hey, Red was here. Look. Red always killed his cigarettes this way. Now you've got to be alive to do that. Red's been dead since two months. That's what I thought. But last night this man came here and he didn't look like Red, but... This is the first thing he did when he came in. He knew everything that only Ruth knew. He even acted and talked like Red. Probably somebody Red coached carefully. Somebody from the thick town who got close to him before he died. If he knows so much, he may know where Red hid the money. That would be his payoff. He gets Red's money for killing all of us. Where does he live? I suppose you're going to say room 505 at the Midtown. Who left his matches here? Ask Tavor and Cain. Thank you. Um, any word of Professor Kingsley? Nothing, Doctor. Hmm. Dad. Margaret was so worried. We talked it over and decided to come on to New York. Ernest, I just had to see George. Where is he? Well, he's out. I, I don't quite know where. But I... I thought you were always with him. I'm afraid you're not going to like this, Margaret, but I'm going to be quite blunt with you. When George was convalescing at home, you were a marvelous nurse. Well, I did what I could. Exactly. When he turned his head, you were there to adjust the pillow. If he reached for a glass of water, you were pouring it for him. I'm sorry I couldn't have done more. But that was just the trouble. If you kept it up, you'd have been a permanent invalid. Well, why didn't you tell me? Oh, naturally, I didn't want to hurt your feelings. And fortunately, George himself rebelled in time. And that's why you brought him to New York alone with you? Of course, my dear. He had to have a change. Has it helped? Is he better? Yes, he is, but we must still be careful. Now, I suggest that you allow him to remain here till he's perfectly ready to go home of his own accord and don't try to see him. Oh, but... I... Now, you and Jean go up to your rooms and get some rest and take the first train out for Newcastle in the morning, huh? Well, if it's best for him, all right. Believe me, it is. Oh, there's George. Margaret, you said you wouldn't try oh, to but... see him. Now, please, will you oh, take him to my room? Oh, Jean, Dad. Jean, I, I assure you what I'm doing is for his please. own good. Now, please believe me. Who were the women? Never mind that. Why, what's happened to your shoulder? I got nicked. Who were those women? My daughter and your wife. My, my what? Oh, Kingsley, sir. 
Well, get him out of here. I don't want any dames around here. Let me see. You've been shot. Yeah. Fix it up, will you? How'd you get it? The coppers shot me. It's only a scratch. How'd you get it? Well, don't ride me. It's your fault anyway. Fine. Yeah. You told me to use this Kingsley gag. Well, I pulled it and it didn't work. Where were you? In Marnie's apartment. They tried to question Professor Kingsley and I wouldn't stand for it. You killed them? Well, what do you think? Come on, get to work. You fool. They'll catch you before we get the money and you... What money? What do you know about the money? Why, I... You know too much, Doc. Just a minute, Red. You kill me, what becomes of you? You think you're Red Cannon, don't you? But whose body are you wearing? Well, you told me. Exactly. George Kingsley's. Professor of English Literature at Newcastle. How'd you like to be George Kingsley for good? What do you mean? You're walking around in Kingsley's body, all right. But part of your brain is his, and you can't control That's it. That's not true. You killed a war. Last night, you murdered Kane in his car outside the club. I saw it. Remember? But do you remember how you woke up? In this very room, you woke as Kingsley, complaining of nightmares, not knowing why you were here. I can't think. What's happened to my brain? I can't remember. Of course you can't. And if I hadn't forced you back into Red Cannon, you'd have gone to Newcastle as Kingsley for the rest of your life. Stop it. I can make you forget you ever were Red Cannon. Stop it, I tell you. I'll cut you in on the door. You'll get your share. From now on, you do exactly as I say. Okay, Doc. Now I'll fix that shoulder. It's no use, Jean. I'm not going home in the morning, not unless George goes with me. But you told Dad... You... I don't care what I said. When George came in, your father practically ran me out of the room. He's trying to conceal something. No, Margaret. I'm going to see George now. And if Ernst tries to stop me, I'll call a New York doctor. Margaret, I'm sure you're worrying over nothing. But I'll go talk to Dad. There you are. Okay. Nice job, Doc. It's not safe to stay here too long. You get that money tonight. Maybe you're right. I'll get going right away. You... Professor King... Dad! Jean. Dad, he didn't even know who I was. Oh, nonsense, Jean. And the way he looked. He was like Professor Kingsley, and yet... Dad, what is back of all this? Haven't you guessed? The operation I performed was a brain transplantation. Then his brain... Is partly the brain of Red Cannon. Dad... Your best friend. Oh, you couldn't. Oh, I saved his life, didn't I? Well, what's the good of that if you've turned him into a criminal? My only thought was to keep him alive, I swear it. But when I saw signs of the gradual awakening of the cannon brain, I knew I'd made a great discovery for science. Cannon's a gangster, a murderer. All right. But in the meantime, I've proved what I always knew to be true. Transplanted human brain cells will live and function. What a triumph. Think of it. I'm not a scientist, Father. I can only see you destroying your best friend. Oh, it's too late to think of that. But you must. Think what you're doing to him and Margaret. Oh, he'll be all right. As soon as I get him back to Newcastle, he'll forget all about this. But I can't do that until... Until what? Until the experiment is completed. You've got to take him home tomorrow. Why? Because it's the only human thing to do. Margaret is suspicious. She threatens to call in a New York doctor, then the truth is bound to come out. Don't forget, Dad, you had no legal right to operate. It means prison. And every chance you might have had for a career in this country is lost. Very well. Tell Margaret we'll go back to Newcastle in the morning. I'll tell her. Gang killer slays two detectives. You'd think the police would catch that killer by now. A guy like that must be a lunatic. If I got one look at him, I could tell his type. Same, sir.
Oh, hello, darling. I sent you a message. I was coming back to your dressing room. Go on home and pack. Pack? Where are we going? South America, for a starter. Have we um, money enough? All the money in the world. Understand? All the money in the world. Let me have the keys to your car. I don't want any taxi drivers hanging around. Yes, yeah, sure. You'll hear from me in an hour and I'll have everything we need. Be ready? What do you think? He wants me to run away with him. He's going to pick up the money now. Good. I knew he would, sooner or later, we'll get it and split it three ways. Well, that's all right with me. I'll point him out to you. There he is at the bar, just getting up. He's taking my car. It should be easy to follow. How do you figure this guy? The way Red got hit, he couldn't have sold everything he knew before he died. I only know that Red is planted in a graveyard and I'm not afraid of anyone else. I Me mean, neither. But knowing this guy knows everything Red knew, that he gives me the creeps. He's leaving us to a half million dollars. shoot if you want to dive 200 feet for it. The money is what we want. Hand it over and we'll give you a break. Okay. Come and get it. Keep him covered. Give you a break. Okay. Come and get it. Keep him covered. Hand it over, and we'll give you a break. Okay. Come and get it. Keep him covered.
happened? Where's Miller? Get me something to open this. Hurry. Go get me a drink, and then we're on our way. Sonny, the split on this now is two ways. I haven't seen him. Why is the bar open? I was getting a drink. I was almost packed and just waiting for you. Well, why are you staring at me? What's happened to you? Marnie and Miller followed me from the nightclub. Now I know why you didn't want me to come back to your dressing room. They were there. What are you looking for? Don't you believe me? I haven't seen Marnay for six months. Fred, look at me. There's never been anybody but you. Believe me. saying? all night shouldn't have kids. All night you work your heart out for the little woman and the little darling. All day long while you're trying to snatch 40 winks, the old lady slams the doors. The kids chase each other in out of the room. One kid jumps up on the bed, hops on your stomach. Daddy, tell me a story. Tell me a funny story. I knock him out of the bed. He screams. The old lady calls me a tramp. Home sweet home. I'll kill him. Shut up. I don't like gabby taxi drivers. the airport. Wesley Airport. What? Wesley Airport. Drive me to the Midtown Hotel. Midtown Hotel. 
It's a crazy business, but it's a living. Midtown Hotel. 480. Thank you. Keep the change. Hey, you forgot your box. A thousand bucks. George. Ernst, something's happened to my mind. I found myself in a taxi. And I don't know how I got there. Ernst. Just a minute, George. You know, Margaret and Jean are here. Margaret? Here? Yes. Now, drink this. I want you to get some rest before you see them. Now, don't worry about a thing. Tomorrow, everything will be all right. enjoyed your visit, Mr. Kingsley. Yes, very much indeed, thank you. May I have the bill? Oh, no, George, allow me. It was understood you were to be my guest, you know. Yes, Mr. Mr. Kingsley? Yes, that's my name. The chief of police would like to see you. Oh, really? But I don't even know him. We'll introduce you. What oh. can the chief of police possibly want? Well, there can't be any charge against Professor Kingsley, surely. No. The chief will explain all that. Who are you? I'm his doctor. He's just recovering from an extremely serious illness. Come along. I'd like to go, too, if you don't mind. All right. Come on. Well, uh, you go ahead to the station, dear. Yes, but George... No, 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 it's all right. We'll meet you there. Goodbye. This is Mr. Kingsley, Chief, and his doctor. Sit down, gentlemen. Oh, thank you very much. The cab driver tried to change this at the bank. Circumstances are so unusual, we're holding him for investigation. A thousand... Look, Ernst. A thousand dollar bill, they really exist. The cab driver said you gave him that for a tip. The cab drivers? Well, that's a kingly gesture. I'm sure you honor me, but a thousand dollars, why, that's almost six months' salary. Bring the driver in. What's your occupation, Mr. Kingsley? I'm, uh, I'm a professor of English literature. And I might add, a very underpaid professor. Oh, I gotta get out of here. I tell you, I gotta get out of here. In there. My wife. She won't like having me staying in jail. Is this the man that gave you that thousand dollar bill? How do you do? Him? Does he look like a grand note to you? The guy I was talking about was a gangster who pushed me in the face. Can you imagine him pushing me in the face? Oh, no. That's all, Mr. Kingsley. Sorry to have inconvenienced you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. We've well, barely time to catch the train, George. Yes. Back in Newcastle, the red cannon brain has become completely dormant. Kingsley has returned to his classroom. And now I can actually bring to a realization my plans for a great laboratory and give the world the benefit of my scientific knowledge. Thus, you see, the Elizabethan novel was a minor passing form and fed the drama of the period, which, I might add, devoured it avidly. I'm going to let you go a little early this afternoon. Early, but not immediately. And I'm quite sure you'll all be glad to hear that tomorrow we're going to have a quiz on the past two weeks' work. Oh. Oh. That's it.
I must apologize for not giving you your full hour this afternoon, but my closest friend, Dr. Sovak, is leaving Newcastle. What was that? What is it? What's that noise? What is it? Why don't you answer me? It's a siren. Probably an ambulance or a police car. What can we do? Here you are. Thank you, dear. Gosh, Dad, I hate to leave this place. Seems so much like home to me. I know, Jean, but at least I'm going to a better position. Of course, Dan. I'll pack the rest of the books. Oh, Dad, I've packed all your instruments. Good girl, Jean. Oh, I per... Where is he? Where's the doc? I want my dough. Where is it? You know where it is. You're sneaking away with it. What do you yes, mean? You do. Tell me where it is. Dad! Stop it. Dad! Red! the answer now, George. I pronounce this man dead. <laughs> 